Bryce, we're going to go ahead and just start it off real quick here. How did you get started in streaming? Let me know. Uh, started Mixer. All right. Um, yeah. Silly shenanigans. Share with the community. Uh, took a long break. Mixer died out. Yeah. Switched to uh, Twitch. And uh, now I'm snatching out of the water on there. Having a lot of fun. Heck yeah. Built a great community. I love to hear that, man. Would you say your community is like a big reason why you've continued to go or you just want to grow with your community? Oh, yeah. Hands down. Um, my community won't let me quit. Uh, one of my, my one and only VIP in my chat. I just mm -hmm. made her a VIP the other day. She messaged me last night because I normally on my days off, I do a two day or a two stream. I do one earlier, one later. Yeah. But yesterday I decided to do a midday stream. Okay. So I'm like, well, that midday stream went kind of long, so I'm not going to do a late night stream. She messaged me. She's like, are, are you good? Are you not streaming right now? Right, right. I'm like, oh yeah, all all's good. Just uh, you know, did a midday stream, and she lives across the pond, so I can't uh, she can't really catch all my streams. But yeah, yeah, I feel that because when I first started streaming, I would stream at like midnight or eight o'clock is when I would start, and then I would go to like four in the morning. So I would do like eight hour streams. And oh, wow. yeah. or or twelve hour streams, you know, like, and the thing is, I had thing is, I had all these viewers from Australia, all these viewers from like the UK and stuff, because mm -hmm. I would stream so late, and uh, late for me, but early for them, and it was funny because like, I didn't even, I don't know, I was just always a always a night owl, so for me it was just like whatever, but then then I started streaming earlier in the day, and I noticed that like all of a sudden I started getting all these like Eastern standard time, you know, the Eastern, the Eastern crew started coming out of the woodwork. And now like, that's pretty much all my viewers. So now like I have to stream early if I want anybody to be watching. <laughs> Cause like, yeah, everybody's I, asleep. I'm the reverse with that right now. Like I tried to do an early day stream. Yeah. And it just, I don't really get the viewers. And now I don't really care how many viewers I have yeah. because it, I do it to have fun. Right. Um, but I have some viewers that come in um, when I'm doing my late night streams and they're just awesome. Right. Um, especially when some of my coworkers decide to pop in the stream and mess with me. <laughs> Heck yeah. I love that. And they're, oh yeah. They, uh, they, uh, they tried getting me banned one day. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of my friends, um, he had, uh, I'm not going to say his Twitch name because yeah, yeah. it can, it can be controversial mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he, uh, tried making me say it on stream. Oh my gosh. Yeah. One of those. Yeah. And like, even if I like did get a report, somebody reported me, it's not really going to go anywhere, honestly, because yeah it's the guy's name i'm not you know being rude mm -hmm. but it was just so much fun me trying to avoid the question while gaming while trying to keep chat yeah. active you know and keeping a straight face all the way through it all and knowing who it was and i knew why he was doing that yeah yeah that happened to me once um i was doing a pokemon giveaway and i had like 130 viewers between Twitch and YouTube because we, I was doing both at the time. And so it was hard to keep track. And I almost, <laughs> they almost got me, dude. They almost got me. Like I started reading it and my, my brain, like I had like spidey senses, dude. And I was just like, nope, we're not doing that. And then everybody was all like, oh, snap. He actually, he, he dodged it. He dodged it. And I was just like, sorry, man, I'm too quick. You know what I mean? Like I was like, not today, not today, man. Cause they almost got me. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I've learned to not always read out loud when I'm reading chat. Yeah. Because sometimes you can get, 
you could say something and yeah. Yeah, it, it becomes like the, the words. Yeah, it becomes like the Ron Burgundy syndrome. Where you think you have to like mm-hmm. I gotta read everything in the teleprompter. You're like, no 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 <laughs> don't don't read everything, man. Don't read everything. Yeah. And there's um, some things I have to skip over because I just I'm like I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that, dude. <laughs> I know, I know. I swear, I feel like the best, like the best training for that is to watch like a few like female streamers because they have to deal with that crap all the time. I feel like, you know, oh dude, uh, yeah. And my little sister is planning on doing streaming because like she com- comes in my stream every once in a while. Yeah, and and she's under the age of eighteen, so she. I'm a very protective brother. Yeah. Um, but I, I was about to go to prison for one of my sisters. Right. That's how protective I am. Right. Um, and so I am going to make sure when she's streaming, I'm not streaming. I will be modding for her chat. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, there's a lot of perverts out there. There are, dude. They really are. hundred percent. Well, even like, even to this day, I won't, I won't even say her like, her screen name or whatever, because I don't know. I just don't feel like it's right. But, um, there's this one girl that would hang out in my like YouTube streams a lot. And she became one of my mods because she was there so much and she was super sweet, super nice, but I didn't know how old she was. So like, I never even, you know, like entertained that thought. Right. Um, right. And so we're just, just like friends or whatever. Um, and even now, like sometimes, some of my other viewers were like, will like ask about her, and I'm all, and I'm just like, are they asking about her because because she's like she's been gone for like she's been MAA for a long time, so I was just like, eh, whatever, that's unfortunate because with streaming, you know, you get used to it, you get used to people just kind of falling off. So right, right. I never really worried about it, but other people have like asked about her, and I'll be like, yeah, I don't really know what happened, but you know, to her because I don't really want to go any further with that you know mm-hmm. oh, yeah, but, yeah. Definitely. yeah it's it's weird it's hard to it's complicated you know what i mean <laughs> a yeah, lot of it, times sometimes it's really saddening sometimes mm-hmm. uh when you get somebody that's constant in your chat yeah and then all of a sudden they're just gone yeah and you try to reach out and they won't respond back. And it's like, although you don't know this person personally, Mm -hmm. you, you still have somewhat of a feeling of an obligation to check up on them. Yeah. You have that connection. Um, kind of like, a. there's this one streamer, um, that my friends, uh, showed me. She Mm -hmm. wasn't, a big time streamer she wasn't get having many views uh yeah. her gameplay wasn't the best her <clears throat> but her personality yeah i absolutely loved her personality like she was an awesome person like yeah pure hearted i love that and she just stopped streaming out of nowhere and mm-hmm. it's been like two months i I tried get uh, reaching out to her and nothing. Man, that's tough. I, I feel bad. <clears throat> like I know it's nothing m- my fault or anything yeah, like that, yeah. but like she was just such a of a kind person that yeah. you feel like, like okay, what is wrong? Right. Yeah. Maybe somebody, because this, this does happen a lot, where, you know, somebody goes into somebody's stream, they say something, you know, vindictive and hurtful, and the person streaming just can't take it, you know, and has to ghost. Right. Yeah, I see that a lot, you know. I had somebody come in my chat uh, the other week do that. Yeah. Troll account. Yeah. I know. Uh, that kind of leads into my next question perfectly, which is perfect segue what is something that would cause you to quit streaming? Um, like to end the stream or just like not stream at all, not stream at all anymore. Like you're done. 
Um, oh, that's a hard one because I, I love it so much and I'm usually a, uh, such a, a passive aggressive person where, you know, I don't really like Twitch could totally screw me over on my, on my payouts. I would still stream. Right. Um, because it, it's just so much fun. Um, I honestly don't know what would cause me to quit streaming. I guess a mental break, probably. Yeah. yeah. But even then, I'd, I'd still recover eventually and come back. Right. That's crazy to think about. Yeah, for me, like, I don't know. I feel like it kind of depends because I was talking about this with one of my other friends, and I feel like if I got, if I got like a, like a girlfriend who would make things difficult, already because i'd be like wanting to spend more time with her right but then on top of that i feel like if i got married then streaming would be like more on the back burner for me i don't know personally because i feel like i'd want to just invest more time in that relationship than streaming unless streaming became a job then that's a different story right yeah if you could do it full time yeah that's my goal. I wish I could do this full time. Same, honestly. Like right now, I'm I'm working at FedEx, and no oh man, dude, it's it's grueling. It's tough work. Oh, dude, I I hear you. I I uh, work full time at Walmart. Snap. There's so many changes going on, and like my anxiety is just through the roof. Yeah. Like Monday was on was my last day uh, for the week. My mm. my two days off yeah and monday morning at six in the morning i'm having a panic attack mm-hmm. i should have called in but i didn't because i knew it would leave only one person for one side of the store on a busy day yeah so i'm like okay well i'm gonna go to work after having a panic attack to work for the place that gives me panic attacks mm-hmm. great that's tough dude that's freaking tough yeah, um, I think the only the only uh, job I had that made me like have like anxiety like that was when I used to be a DJ. I was a DJ for like five or six years, and oh shit! Every time before I would do a party, my anxiety would be like all you know what I mean, just like crazy high, because I'd be like, oh my gosh, like this party probably cost them forty thousand dollars. Like some of them, you know, were like that expensive for everything for like the, the open bar, the, you know, the decorations, the venue, you name it. Right. right so right. my, my anxiety would not be helped <laughs> when I started thinking about stuff like that. So I had to constantly be like, it's fine. You're just doing a party for the client. You know, you want, you know, you're, you're trying to give them, you're trying to give them a good time, you know, and you'll have a good time as well. You know, like constantly having to like train your brain. It's, I get it though. It's hard. Definitely. Yeah. I I think being a DJ would be a fun job, but can be, I can imagine the stress on it as well. would be amazing. Yeah. That's the thing. Like I kind of miss it now in retrospect when I think about it, but at the same time, I'm like, do I really want to like do that again and jump into that, that stress pit one more time? Right. Right. Yeah. Cause you got to make sure you got the, you know, a really good playlist yeah yeah for me like because my my dad's a dj and he's been a dj for like 40 years now and okay so he trained me and everything right and so i've always been around music i've always been like listening to music all kinds of different genres my whole life and he's created these crazy good playlists so that way like what would happen was whenever i whenever i do a set whenever i dj like it just be on ipods or I well, and then then we did iPads as well, and you know when we started getting a little more advanced. But literally, so many different playlists. So I already know what pretty much everybody likes because as soon as I walk into a room, I start looking at all, all the people, and I go, okay, I got a group of like people that look like they're in their forties, so their music that they're gonna like is gonna be seventies, eighties, and then I look look around to the room a little more. Okay, I see some people that look like they're probably in their seventies. Okay, so they're going to like movies. They're, they're going to like, you know, music from the 50s, 60s. You automatically start like systematically 
you know, scanning reading people. Yeah, you start yeah, reading you gotta, the room and you get really good at doing that. So by my last year of like DJing, I was just like crazy good at reading the room and knowing exactly what music people would like. So I've rarely, I only got one complaint in the entire time that I DJed. Okay. Which nice. is pretty crazy. But yeah, I, and I think it's just because what happened was like, this, the client was already very negative. You know, they were just like those people that were like Karens. They're just looking for a problem. And this old woman came up and she was all like, can you play a salsa song? And I was like, sure. Because I'm trying to, you know, like do requests, right? So I played right. this song and that was the one complaint. They're like, he played a random salsa song. I'm not really sure what that was about. And I'm just like, okay, wow. And when I, when I explained it to my dad, he was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> he's like these people because he because he even told me that when they were like when they were booking the party they were constantly complaining about the price saying they wanted it to be cheaper when they're a venue that makes way more money than we were charging you know like it's oh, it yeah. wasn't absurd at all what we were charging but yeah, they uh that happens well everybody wants everything for cheaper yeah it's true it really is so let's see. I'm trying to think about another question here. All right, what do you what do you got going on for merch? What do you got going on right now? Uh currently nothing. Um mm. I it's been uh a thought that's been in my mind uh for quite a while. Um you know, when is the time to strike for merch? Yeah, I've heard some streamers say, "Oh, you want to wait until you have uh, a little bit more of a following," or, and some people will say, "Oh, it's never too early to start merch." Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I really haven't really like dug into it to start looking at like, okay, who can I sell merch from? From yeah, or with um, I already have ideas of what my merch would be mm -hmm. and it's going to be a beanie um one of them for sure nice. because if you ever watch my streams you'll never see me without the beanie right maybe like months back but now it's a thing right i always have the beanie it's part of your um, brand and yeah yep and it's gonna have my logo on it um yeah i vibe with that oh, I and then uh there is a uh, one of my emotes that uh, my buddy made, and that's gonna be uh, a T-shirt. Nice of a pizza slice. That's good. That's good. Relatable, simple, sellable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The reason why I wanted to ask you is because I talk about my merchandise a lot because of the fact that. Within the past couple months, I randomly started my clothing line again. So Okay. So I had a clothing line like two years ago and it kind of failed. I won't lie. I had it up for a year and I only had nine sales over an entire year, which is abysmal at best. And right. I sunk about a I sunk about a grand into it, you know? between advertising and all that. But then randomly, like I said, this is like years later, randomly I just wanted a hoodie for work because it was like, you know, earlier this year it was colder. So I was like, I'll just make one. I already I already like have, have a like, you know, contacts that I can reach out to. So I had the hoodie made and I was just wearing it at work and my coworkers were like, dude, that looks really sick. Like, where'd you get that? I was like, oh, it's like, it's my brand. I'm like, what? Your brand? Come on. Like, where'd you get it? And I was like, no, for real. Like, I made this. And they were like, well, I, I kind of want to buy it. And I was like, you do, huh? <laughs> well, we can make that work. So, like, already that's when I started, like, thinking about all this now for the past few months of, like, how I can keep the brand going, what I can do next, and all that. So, that's why I want to bring it up because I was like, oh, I want to see, I want to see where you're at with that, you know. 
so do you think you're going to wait until you get like a little bit more of a following again or what are you thinking? Yeah, I, I think I'm going to try to hold off a little bit. Um, in the meantime, probably do a little research. Um, yeah. Cause I know I can sell merch through like Streamlabs and whatnot. Right. Um, so I just got to figure out what, what's the best option. Mm-hmm. I think, cause there. yeah, yeah. I think for me, like I looked into Streamlabs, I remember, and it's way too expensive in my opinion, unless you're like sponsored by them. If you're sponsored by them, it's like fine. Cause you get like, you get a discount on their subscript on their like premium subscription, which gives you the like the ability to get like higher profit margins from sales, yada yada. You know your store looks nicer. You have all these different like incentives, right? But if you're not sponsored by them, I think you I think you're better off going through like a print on demand company like Designed by Humans, which doesn't cost you any money up front and they do everything for you, shipping, all that. Yeah, your profit margin's low, but you don't have to pay a monthly fee like you do with Streamlabs, you know. Okay, okay. I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah, so you have that. You have Redbubble, which um, I just put a bunch of uh, merchandise on. And once again, you don't have to pay anything up front. They give you a profit margin. The profit margin's higher. And you have a lot more products like stickers. You have... um, what's it like literally clutch bags like they have <laughs> backpacks they have so many things you can do they don't have beanies right now though i will say um well they're not getting my business exactly but <laughs> but designed by humans i think only has i think they only have shirts right now but beanies you could do through a company like printify which is this other one that i've been looking into right now y'all what's good blaze and printify is where i just uh i just launched my store again so I finally launched my store again through Printify and they have like a lot of different products. Like they got everything from shirts, beanies, yoga pants, you name it. So, okay. but you don't have to do, you don't have to pay like an upfront price with them. If you do, uh, if you do your shop through Etsy, so it'll take a little legwork, a little research on Etsy, but once you do it through Etsy, you only have to pay 20 cents for each listing you do so it's very affordable where my stickers fool <laughs> i'm done blaze oh man but yeah blaze is the one who uh good old, good old cgm 34 who told me to to reach out to you so here we are yeah I, oh, I love cj he's an awesome guy he really is he's a crazy dude but i like that kind of crazy oh yeah definitely Matches my crazy. <laughs> right, right. I still can't believe that, like, me and him met from him stream sniping me, and now we're friends. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I, I never heard this this story. Yeah, we, we, we talked about it. We talked about it on, on, uh, on, on uh, like, the episode that we did, because I, I had to have him on, because I still consider him my number one fan. So I was like, if there, you know, there, if, like that's what, that's the cool thing about technology today, right? It's like if you have a way to reach out to your number one fan like that, you got to do it, you know. Right, right. So that's why I did. And by the way, thank you, Blaze, for that resub. Forty-seven months in a row, you actually are killing it, my guy. One more month, and that'll be four years straight. That's what I mean. He's there. He's always there. He he's one of those people too who's like, "Hey, man, he he gonna be streaming tonight." And I'd be like, I, don't, I mean, I'm kind of at work, but I mean, like, hey, come on, man. Just just click that go live button. <laughs> like, 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 he's always he's always about it, man. He's always there. But, yeah. And do you have any questions for me, Bryce? Hit, hit me with it. Oh, God. Oh, I'm not good at, like, putting on the spot for questions. I know. Well, I guess. It's a reverse interrogation. What? What inspired you to start a podcast? Because, because that's whole right. part of the reason. Like I, I asked CJ about your podcast. Yeah. Because I plan on, <clears throat> I've been wanting to start a podcast, and mm-hmm. I was actually talking with CJ about it. Like, 
you know, like should we host it together? Yeah. What, um, uh, and all this, but like what inspired you to start the podcast? So what inspired me to start the podcast was I'll be, I'll be transparent. I needed YouTube content and I was like, okay, what is the best long form YouTube content that I can do? And I was like, dude, a podcast why not that, that is basically the same reason that i wanted to start one too is yeah because i wanted to stream the podcast on youtube and then do my regular streams on twitch i like that and that would still be in twitch tos so you wouldn't have to worry about that right because all i'm doing is using Streamlabs obs to stream to youtube yeah and then uh, I'll switch it over to Twitch to mm. stream my games. And then I'll post like clips of gameplay to YouTube. But yeah, after the 24 hour mark, Twitch, hold your horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but yeah, that's the main reason, man. That's, I just wanted, I wanted YouTube content. I was like, uh, I want to, I want to do something on YouTube, but I feel like Let's Plays for me are not the best because I've tried them and everybody watches the first episode and nobody watches anything else. So that's kind of why I stopped doing it, you know, to be honest. Like YouTube just was like super boring for me because like you start getting caught up in numbers, you know. Oh my gosh, Blaze, I'm so done. I, I will, I will. But... Like I you I get so caught up in numbers that like I will start being like, Okay, if this doesn't get a certain amount of views then there's no point. You know what I mean? And it's just like it's a it's a problem. It's toxic for me. So mm. I to train myself not to think about it, that's why I, I think that's why I started doing the podcast because I was like, if it gets views, cool. If it doesn't, whatever. Either way, I still had a good time. Right. You know. And it forces me to actually like stream more on a schedule, which is what I like. Oh yeah, true. Because I'm very bad like with procrastinating and just like, oh yeah, it's my day off. I'll stream sometime. Which oh that that reminds me, I got to update my schedule on Twitch. You're welcome. Okay, so because this it says that I should be streaming right now. <laughs> <laughs> so the question that Blaze has been having me ask just about everybody is. If there was a full dive headset for VR, just like Sword Art Online, would you be down? A full what? A full dive VR. So have you seen Sword Art Online, the anime? I don't watch anime. Okay. Well, <laughs> Blaze, this I'm, question is wasted. I'm, I'm weird. <laughs> but yeah, so... Sorry, CJ. <laughs> are you, you're familiar with VR though, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, so full VR. dive VR is basically when you are going, your brain is literally like going into VR. So you're completely immersed. No question. Okay. And everything that you do in the VR world, you're able to smell, taste, feel. It's like insanely realistic. Would you be down? Okay. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, that's like some Ready Player One stuff right there. Right. Now... What do you think the implications of that would be? That's the that's the next question. Always every time. Oh, I could I could see there's going to be uh, some some things on there that uh, are not very uh, appropriate. I guess would be the way to call it. Yeah, exactly. Our whole thing was like talking about the fact that like, would you ever want to go back to real life? And I think it'd be really hard, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I get so immersed into games. Yeah. Like, part of the reason why my ex left me uh, last year is because when I when I get home, I turn on the PC, I start gaming, and I don't look at my phone. Yeah. Um. And, uh, yeah can only go so far with uh, not talking to your girlfriend and only talking to your buddies in game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That could be uh that could be a bit of a detriment. <laughs> yeah. 
I feel that's that part of the reason why I stream now is is I'm trying to build that communication skill. Yeah. Um, because I years ago I got really messed up in the head and I just I lost my communication skills. Used to be a silver tongue guy. Yeah. And now my tongue is basically made of lead. Dang. Yeah. I know. Like, my communication skills got better and better through time because I, uh, like I said, for years I was, like, very shy in front of people. And even when I was 18, like, that's when I started becoming a DJ. And I was very nervous about doing that. Like, terrified my anxiety was like through the roof even thinking about becoming a dj because i knew i was gonna have to be in front of a lot of people i knew i was gonna have to be talking i knew i was gonna have to be interacting with tons of people you know upwards of 200 people in one room at one time and i'm glad i did it though so glad because it forced me out of my shell it forced me to realize that it's really not scary to talk to people and people are pretty dope you know if you give them the chance to be. So. Right. Yeah. I've, I've noticed with streaming, I've I've actually gotten a lot better with my uh, communication. Um, yeah. One thing that's hard for me is uh, talking to people who aren't there. Yeah. You're saying like when you're when you're streaming and you're just kind of like talking out loud right like about the game or whatever like somebody is there yeah 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 you know uh like anybody that gives advice about streaming will say you know you know you want to kind of narrate what you're doing Mm -hmm. and that's what i struggle with you know yeah because i'm thinking in my head like why the hell would somebody want to (laughs) like be like okay i'm gonna jump over this fence okay well you could see it in game i'm jumping over this fence yeah I know it's it's um, weird, but literally, I was talking about this with um, with a uh, Krogar who was on the podcast as well, um, and I can't turn it off now. I do it so much because I've been doing it for like five years, so I literally cannot turn it off. I'll be like, you know, just playing games by myself, and I'll literally be like, okay, I'm gonna jump over here, and then I'm gonna like, like I'm just like, I'm always, I'm always doing it now. Really? It's on autopilot. All right, all right. All right, we're going to hit this jump. Yeah. We're going to hit this jump now. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, it's so, uh, it's so like, ingrained in my brain now that, like, I can't really, like, turn it off, which is hilarious. But well, I mean, that's a good thing, though, at least. I mean, yeah. You're, you got that ingrained into your head now to do that. Whereas for me, it's like, okay. I'm more of a I was always a silent player. Yeah. I know like <clears throat> I know some people cuz I used to compete in Smash Bros, not like professionally but just like locals. And okay. there were some people that would have to wear headphones cuz they could not hear other people talking around them. Like they'd get distracted and wouldn't be able to like focus on the fight. And for me oh, yeah, like that's Yeah. That's like me. Okay. Yeah, I, like I said, I get I get so immersed into the game where, like, if I have a roommate or whatever, they have to be in a different room when I'm gaming because mm-hmm. if I hear them while I'm gaming, it messes me up. I don't blame you. Yeah. For me, like, I, I don't know. That never really affected me. I would always just kind of, like, I was so used to it. I think that's because, like, I grew up in a household of, you know, seven people total because... I have, you know, three siblings and then, or I have four siblings and then, you know, with my parents and everything. So it was just like this gigantic household constantly. Yeah. See, for me, I grew up in a big household as well. Um, I actually have 10 siblings. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) 10 siblings. Are you the youngest? Uh, no. Um, okay. So let's split up because my parents are divorced. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, just to make it easier, I'll start from the top and work the way bottom. Uh, I got my oldest sister Ashley. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's my stepsister. Uh, 
her mom married my dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then we got her biological sister, uh, Kayla. Um, same thing, you know, uh, stepsister, her mom married my dad. And then I had my biological brother, Tim, mm -hmm. uh, same mom, same dad. And then I have my half sister, Mandy. Uh, we have the same dad. Mm -hmm. And then I have my biological brother, Dalton. Uh, same mom, same dad. Then there's me. And then there's uh, Robert and Samantha. Uh, they are technically my cousins, but my mom and my stepdad adopted them. Okay. And then we have my half brother and half sister, Caleb and Kira. Uh, we have the same mom. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have my uh, little sister, Bethany. Um, she's adopted uh, mm. by my mom and stepdad. And cool thing is, uh, she's actually 16 hours apart from my little sister, Kira. Whoa, that's trippy. And they were best friends since birth. Nice. Um, we actually known their family for years. They grew up just down the road from us. That is so trippy. We used to babysit them all the time. <laughs> what? That's crazy. I can't imagine, like, from babysitting to being like, oh, no, yeah, you're actually part of our family now. Like, what? That's so cool. Yep. And when uh, when my mom had, uh, announced at a family get-together that, we uh, that she was going to adopt her, yeah, I looked right at her and I go, no, oh, this is really nothing new. I mean, you've always been part of the family. Nice. That's so cool. I mean. I love that. Yeah. So, yeah. Not all in one household, but, you know. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so, for me, you know, growing up, I got annoyed with all of the noise. So, I had to have the headset on to focus. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, fair enough, man. You got you to do what you got to do, you know, to stay uh, stay ingrained. I get it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My little yeah, my it's... little brother is the same way. He has to have, like, he has to have the headset on. He can't focus otherwise at all. <laughs> yeah. It, it's hard to focus when you got so many people living in one house. Like, yeah. if you, like for you, I can understand, you know, it wasn't that many where you could learn to adapt but yeah when you get to a higher point it's like okay well now the noise is not just four people it's seven people <laughs> yeah that's crazy yeah i i get it i definitely get it like that would be that would drive me nuts i think i, I think i would have to wear a headset as well like i don't, yeah. think, I, I don't think i would have been able to adapt man that would have been nuts well and and uh, I guess part of the reason why I would have to wear a headset is because I always had to wear a headset growing up, whether I liked it or not. Mm. Yeah, I feel because that. Because we didn't really have the room to go like, okay, I didn't get to have my gaming area right in my room. I had it in the living room. Right, right. I had a, I had a little beanbag chair. And a small TV hooked up yeah. to my Xbox 360, you know, to yeah. play my games. Sounds about right. Yeah, that makes, and every, makes perfect sense, honestly. Yep. And if I tried to take my headset off and just have the sound come through the TV, my mom would get mad at me. So I was like, okay, well, fine. I'll just keep my headset on. Yeah. But now I feel bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I ask? I, okay. I wouldn't. Change, I wouldn't. I wouldn't change any of it for anything. It was yeah, yeah. Kind of, uh, you know, that's what made me into the gamer I am today. True. Would you say you're like pretty, uh, pretty proficient in shooters? Because you, you know, you're saying that you like to play like PUBG or. Um, I'm not like. If I really tried, I could be uh, a decent uh, or a little bit higher than that. Mm -hmm. But I mainly play games now where it's just not as much of a shooter as it is more of an adventure. I see. Um, like the game I'm stuck on right now is Sea of Thieves. 
Mm, okay. Still never played. I've heard it's great. Um, I swore it off for so long until all my friends decided that they were going to play it. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'll put a sub goal up. If I hit 20 subs, I'll buy it. Right. And, uh, yeah, somebody giving me 20 subs. I'm like, okay, well, now I have to go get it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But, I uh, tell you, man. The other reason why I decided to start a podcast, too, is because I lost my capture card in the move because I recently moved. And... I lost my capture card, and so I was just like, you know what? I'm going to have to play stuff on my PC anyways. I might as well start a podcast. I might as well. But, yeah. Yeah, losing your capture card can be rough. Um, whenever I play and stream on my Xbox, I, I have a capture card, but I don't use it. Hmm. So you just stream directly from the Xbox or what? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I- Terrible quality, but <laughs> unfortunately, I can't use my wire wireless headset mm-hmm. for uh, streaming through uh, uh, my Xbox. So, oh, okay, okay. Well, if I and that, and I can't uh, can't stand not having my uh, sound alerts and all that. Yeah, not come through my headset. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll just stream it through uh, Xbox Companion and uh, capture the window on Streamlabs and hope for the best. That's pretty cool that they have that. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, it, um, apparently, you can do the same thing through uh, PlayStation as well. Hmm. Okay. Um, they have like a play anywhere type thing. I'm going to have to look into that. Honestly. Okay, Blaze, I, I I might. I might. I might play Sea of Thieves. I don't think I'd oh. be denying it at all. It does sound like a good time oh, to me. CJ and I got to get playing on that. I haven't gamed with CJ in a while. We played some Among Us last night. but <laughs> Dude, Among Us, the sound effects are so crisp. Like, they really are. I love the sound effects in that game. I uh, I used to hate on that game too, but now, now I'm hooked on it. It's funny, all the games I used to hate on before right. playing. Now I'm like, okay, anybody want to play? Yeah. Honestly, I there's like one game that people tell me that I should play and I've and I've tried it. I have tried it, which is World of Warcraft, and I just cannot get into it. Oh. Oh my god, World of Warcraft. Oh. I, I can't get into it, man. I have to keep myself away from it. So you are you're very into it then, yeah? Um, let's put it this way: if I to revert back to uh, the question of what would cause me to stop streaming, I think <laughs> I found the answer: <laughs> World of Warcraft, because I will get so in depth into it that I will forget to stream. <laughs> Dang. That's crazy to me. I yeah, I had to go in and uh cancel my subscription, uninstall it and uh like anytime I open up uh the launcher for it, I have to like quickly like scroll past World of Warcraft. I'm like, "Okay, no, no, cannot play it." Dang. That's insane to me. Honestly. Yeah. It, I'm a bit of a wow nerd. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. I like I tried. I really did. I played because they had like a free trial or whatever where you could play for, you know, a month. And so then I was like playing and I was trying to get into it. And I was so bored that I just could not I could not keep going. And then when I knew that there was the paywall of like you have to do his monthly subscription, I was like, No, nah, not doing that. No way. Yeah. Yeah, they that paywall really is a bad thing to it, but yeah. at the same time it really keeps the game going. Yeah, but they kinda changed up the game so much to the point where it just it's uh no longer 
It's no longer the same game. Yeah. I feel that. Because they obviously changed a lot. Um, For me, like, League of Legends is a problem. I have to be careful with how much I play League because I love League so much that... And no, but nobody in my on my like stream likes it, so it's another reason why I have to like be careful when I play because um, I'll just find myself just playing League all day, all freaking day. I have I have found uh, there's some games that I enjoy playing, but my viewers do not like watching me play that. Yeah, like I'll, I'll happen to look over at. At my viewer count, you know, I'll be like going from just chatting, you know, I'll have like eight people, and then yeah, all of a sudden I, I launch this game, and they're like, okay, bye, and down to three. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I, I hear you guys. Yeah, I can play. Yeah, league. That's a no no. <laughs> it's like the captain of the ship. That's a no go. Can't be doing that. Now, do you rage with League, or is it just... Uh... No, I mean, occasionally. But, for, like, I've stopped doing that because it's just, like, at that point, I'm just being, you know, I'm mad at my own performance and the fact that I'm not doing the right plays, and so then I'm taking it out on the people, you know? Like, I used to do okay. that a lot. Where you, you know what I mean? You're, like, blaming everybody else, and you're really the problem. So... I would do that a lot when I was playing League, and I was like, "Yeah, I gotta stop doing that. Like, I can't, I can't do that." <laughs> yeah, it's true. My focus is dead on the game. Like, I don't, I barely, I don't even really reach at at all when I'm playing League. I'm just constantly en- engulfed in the game. So I guess, I guess League is almost like my World of Warcraft to you, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm playing League, and I'm like, I like to play jungle. So I'm always, with jungle, you have to be, like, even more hyper-focused. So I'll be like, okay, I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to get the dragon, and then I'm just, okay. <laughs> I'm just like, just 100%. I've never heard of that game. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun, I will say. Okay. Learning curve is up there, though. The learning curve is hard. There's a lot to know. Okay. Yeah. Because when I uh, when I first started playing League, I was just playing for fun, and the game has also changed a lot. So I, I started playing, like, years ago, 2016, 2017. And then I put it down for a while, and I got and then I just, like, would just randomly come back to it and play it. And then last year is when I played it for, like, the entire year throughout. I just played it a lot and researched a lot of videos, um from like pros and stuff and learned a lot more about the game. And now, now I can get like challenger, challenger, uh, CS, which is like, cause like as you're playing the game, you have to kill these little minions and that's what's known as your creep score or CS for short. And the higher that is, the better. Cause that means you're, you know, you're getting a lot of gold to contribute to your team. So my yeah. CS a lot of times is like, challenger or like right below challenger which is like the highest rank so i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty proficient in farming which is really good in that game but my combat a little bit lower so that's something that i've been getting better with but it's tough man that game so is you're like not much of a pvp or you're just more of a yeah not as PvE-er. much yeah not as much i'm more of a like that that's like um the the best part about being a jungler is you can you can either just be a farmer and just you know get objectives for your team or you can PvP as well. You know, just depends on your playstyle. That's my favorite part about the jungle and League of Legends. So, it's one thing I love about that game cuz um before I would be more of like a like the main attacker for the team and I just didn't really like it. Because it was way too much, like, way too much stress and people, like, raging on me and stuff. And it's just like, I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to learn, you know? They're like, oh, you're not doing enough damage, man. Come on. You know? <laughs> but then if you're a jungler, like, you I mean, you pretty much people complain no matter what. Because they're like, hey, you didn't help me get this kill. Because that's one thing you do is you try to help people set up kills. 
So then they'll get mad at you for that too. But as long as you're getting objectives, for the most part, nobody cares because the objectives helps everybody, regardless. Right. So. Yeah, I'm not much of a PvPer uh, myself. Mm-hmm. I uh, I enjoy more of the PVE mm-hmm. style uh, gaming. Yeah. Um. Like for uh, Sea of Thieves, yeah. there is quite a bit of PvP going on. Um, right. But you can kind of go on without uh, doing PvP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until somebody kind of rolls up on you. <laughs> for real. That's what I've heard. But uh, it's actually... I enjoy PvP when it's not mandatory. Yeah. I, I get that. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever played um, any of the Souls games? Or no? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. So Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, Shadows oh, Eye Twice, wait. those kind of games. I have to quick do do a quick Google search on on that because I'll I'll recognize it by the cover. Yeah, I know you will. But I was gonna say with Bloodborne specifically, it's why I love it so much. You can either play the game co op or you can play it single. Hey, I see you there, Blaze. And you can also PvP people. But it's normally like up to you if you PvP someone, unless you have your if you have your game in uh, offline mode. But if you have your game in online mode, then like people can just like randomly come in and you just have to fight them. And you're like, oh my, what the heck? Like, what are you doing here? So a lot of people will just like get to a really high level and then just troll people and just destroy them. So, which is something that I know yeah. was going on a lot in Sea of Thieves. Looking at Dark Souls, I. I think I've played it before. It looks familiar. Yeah. I think I did a demo for it. Okay. But I, I don't think I uh, get, played anything past the demo. Yeah, Dark Souls, those games are insanely hard. I have never I've never really played the Souls games, like the the Dark Souls series 1 through 3, but I played I played and beat Bloodborne and then I'm on the last boss of Sekiro right now, which is like a bit different. It's where you're a samurai instead of being like a knight, you know. Most of them you're like a knight, but um in Sekiro you're a freaking rogue shinobi, which is super dope. Okay. But yeah. Insanely hard. Now if there's a uh if there's a caster player, then I'd be more down to play. Oh yeah. Sheesh. Yeah, it was good. Sophie too. Thank you for that follow fam. Welcome to the Dragon Army. But, yeah, you can you can play as more of like a mage um, okay. in, I think it's in Dark Souls 2, I want to say, um, and in Bloodborne, but it's really hard to do that build. Like, you have to be, like, very strategic <laughs> in order to do, like, a mage build. But in Bloodborne, you can literally do, like, an all-out gun build. Like, some people will literally just have a Gatling gun, which is super cool. So, it just depends. That almost reminds me of, like, Outriders right now. I've heard of Outriders. What is it about? Um, okay. So, you take the game fighting mechanics of, um, uh, the division of Tom Clancy's. Okay. Um... And uh, the graphics from, oh, God, what other game? Like Borderlands? But it's basically, mm, no. Hmm. It's got similar graphics style, actually, to Dark Souls. Okay, okay. Um, And it's got, yeah, like CJ said, uh, Looters, Looters of, of Destiny. Destiny. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's like a mashup of all those. Um, that sounds really fun. You can, you can be a trickster, uh, or a, uh, CJ might be able to CJ say what all the classes are. Baby. He's played more of it than I have. Yeah. Yeah. 
I haven't touched it in a while. Nice. It's it's very much of a room clear game. Mm, so not like a dungeon crawler per se, but almost. Yeah. It, it's uh, yeah, Technomancer is one of them. Mm. Is one of the classes. Pyromancer. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and Trickster. There we go. There, okay. There's three. Um, I see. And each one of them, you can build your uh, skill sets. You can mod your gear to increase uh, your spell casts. Nice. Um, but you basically clear one room. You work, go to another room. You clear it, and you get more higher tier loot. Heck yeah! As the world tier progresses. Nice. It's got an amazing storyline to it. Okay. We'll have to take your word for it. Yeah. It... And what's it for? PC, PlayStation, what's it for? Like everything? Uh, I think it's on all of them. Okay. It's cross-platform. Nice. I like that. I like that. Because I've been playing yeah, I love... a lot of Minecraft recently, so... Oh, yeah, Minecraft. I love Minecraft. Been trying to get back into it, but hard to find people uh, in my gaming community that I'm right here, play it baby. at the same time I do. Don't even worry. I got you. <laughs> I tried I tried uh, um, just uh, the other day, downloaded uh, an AT launcher to play some Minecraft on a friend's server. Yeah. And I don't know what happened, but my internet flickered uh, from it. Um, something happened with my firewall on my computer. Oh, gosh. I couldn't even... I couldn't... Uh, it, it crashed my Streamlabs. What? Um, I had to log out of Streamlabs. Yeah. Re-log in. Mm. Uh, reset my router. Goodness. Um, Had to go into my firewall and disable some things. Mm. Because I couldn't even watch Twitch. What? I would get error two thousand. Mm. And I used three different uh um uh internet uh applications, I guess mm -hmm. whatever they're called. And it did that and it didn't work on either one of them. That's trippy, man. Yeah. Do you so think I'm it was like stick with my uh, ISP issue, or do you think it was like a like RAM? What do you think it was? I don't know what it was. Uh, I, I mean, I don't have the greatest of computers, but mm -hmm. I mean, oh, it it definitely uh, put a damper on my uh, on my day. Yeah, I don't blame you. When you really want to like play something, and you're just like, hey, I can't do that. I get that. For sure. Well, we are right about at an hour right now, so I think probably going to let you go, my guy. But right. I had a good time. How about you? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, now I have to start thinking of uh, how to set up a podcast for myself. Yeah. I definitely have you on there. Heck yeah. I'll have definitely gonna have CJ. Right. You you gotta have the boy, you know, the tried and true. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm CJ is my boy. So glad he, he randomly came into one of my streams. Yeah, exactly. That's I think that's kind of the uh the overarching overarching theme with him, you know. <laughs> Well, like how on how I met him, uh, I posted in one of my in uh, one of the discords I'm part of, uh, saying that I was live and I'm almost to a hundred followers. Him and one other guy came in, dropped me a follow, and he's like, "All right, now it's uh, 95." The other guy, "Oh, now it's not now to 96." Yeah. And then uh, CJ just like concurrently came through my streams, um. And he also uh, showed support to all my friends. Yeah. Um, and just been really cool. And then we're like, well, you know what? 
he's just going to be part of the inner circle now. Heck yeah. He, he's earned his way, or his way in. Love I the know. guy. He's got a he's got he's got a way of doing that. He's he's a charismatic little fricker. I won't lie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, but I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream here. Drag of the Dragonite, and I am a flying off, and I will see you guys.